Aloha. This is Matt Darnell with Comtel.cloud. Dot cloud like up in the sky. Today we're going to be looking at this switch from TP-Link, the TLSG116E. We've already done an unboxing on this, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, this says an easy smart switch. I'm not quite sure you know, how how smart it is if it's even going to have it, but let's go ahead and and open it up, and we'll set we'll set this up here as <laughs> maybe we will. We'll set this one up and just see, again, this is an entry-level uh, switch, uh, much like the Grand Stream is. So let's go ahead and, oh, it's got a little thing here. Let's go ahead and open that up. I have not looked at the, um, the uh, spec sheet for this, if it supports um, bonding. But it's just a traditional 16-port uh, switch, uh, no um, no PoE. It's just got a barrel plug and looks like a Kensington lock there. Uh, you know, for a, a metal case, usually they have a little grounding uh, screw or something. But it's got a, a reset thing right there, so if you need to do a reset. And this probably just has yeah, this just has the power. And that's it. There's no patch cord. There's no, no nothing. Oh, we've got uh, little feet. Now this is not um, rack friendly here, so you just would put the little feet um, right here on the bottom. Let's dive right into the programming of this switch. There are two ways to program it. One is directly through the browser, and I've already done a port scan, and I'm assuming that just this port 80 is the one that has it. But if I fire up the app, You'll notice, and you can download this right off the TP Link Scheme uh, site. It'll scan for you and let you know uh, what it is right there. So, dot 122. And if I compare that with the port scan, uh, we can see that 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 does confirm there. So, let's go ahead and just get started in the web app so you can see what that looks like. Um, the default is admin, admin, and then it's going to force me to change that password to something else. Let me go ahead and Put that a new password in there okay so then w once we're in here uh you know, we can change the device description and say uh since it's in the comtel lab and apply that setting i have um upgraded the firmware it came it was a few revs back so i upgraded the firmware again just to write download off of of the site um when looking at the programming I do prefer the uh, app better than here on the website. Uh, the only thing wrong with the app, as is, is you'll see, is the size of it. But here, let's go ahead and just um, do set it for a static IP. So if I was to disable um, DHCP, uh, let me give it not 30. Let's get to 33 here. So I'll apply that. And then let's actually see if it oh, it does read I love it when it when they redirect you to, to the new um, IP address uh, of that so uh, if I go back to the system here um, user account I can only have one user account again this is a small uh, medium-sized business switch uh, 25 folks and under um, so you know we're not gonna have multiple accounts with different access to, to different parts. I can do all of my backup, my config, my restore, uh, but let, let's go ahead and take a look at something a little more complicated, like, like a VLAN. So if I wanted to do a uh, you know, normal kind of VLAN programming, let me go ahead and enable it here. And here's where you can see a difference uh, between the web programming and here in the app. So let's say I wanna add say VLAN 101, Oh, I think it was it was refreshing there 101 and we'll call it uh, voice so if, and what I was doing earlier I was pressing apply here but it's all the way down here is add modify when you I guess like at least one port okay we'll say ports two three and four are going to be tagged uh, for that VLAN and say five and six will be un untagged for there. So yeah, when you hit apply, everything just goes away. So we'll click add modify. And now if I want to get back to, it's just so natural that I would just click right here to get back 
to B9 101. I have to come up here, type B9 101, and then everything does come back. But well, let, let's compare that with the application. So uh, it's not on this IP address. So if I, if I go and refresh it, you'll notice how small the, it is. Even when you know when you, when you lower your resolution, uh, it still stays the same. And if you maximize it, you know, and things don't get um, you know bigger, it just kind of the, the words don't get bigger. I can change. Uh, the kind of things that we did not kind of nice right from here without even logging in I can I have, to, I have to authenticate but I don't have to log into the switch to go ahead and um, access the, the IP part of that but let's go ahead and log in and I'll put in admin and our password and then this is what I'm talking about they have all this white space over here you know this should just get bigger uh, now you'll notice like the device description <laughs> is there I, I don't think I, I, I entered that right but if I go into uh, the same type of place I was before so the VLAN and um, I have all if I click VLAN 101 right here you'll notice everything just pops right up and I can uh, uh, get default VLAN to untag ports tag ports it just I, I prefer this way of looking at one it's laid out like the switches where here in the uh web interface you know it's 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 this and this is just not as intuitive uh to me as when it's laid out like this you know both are certainly functional and uh we're able to to do that so we're able to do uh everything in the app that we do in, in the browser and vice versa it's almost a one for one like if i go to qos i've got these three settings there basic bandwidth control um, if i switch over here to qos again the same same settings i have there system system um they're 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 pr pretty much um I I identical you hear system reset and that i have to open up system tools to get to those uh settings there but but yeah so you can choose the way that you want to do it now what what's interesting and you might have picked this up from the port scan is there's no 443 so this is going over you know unencrypted over your network now that's probably not a big deal um, in that we are only going to be doing this on the land you know we're not, you know we're probably not going to be connecting this anywhere out on, on the world this isn't going to be um you know an edge switch or, or anything like that and i didn't see any way to turn on 443 so that's, that's certainly something um to consider and i haven't done a packet capture Using the web browser, it's obviously unencrypted. It's just HTTP uh, port 80, and I didn't find any way to turn on in, you know, encrypted traffic using port 443. And when you use the app, it appears like it's all UDP traffic and just broadcast. So don't assume at all that uh, this is encrypted uh, over the wire when you're doing your programming, even with the app. Let's go down the options here of the switch and what I like about it is it calls everything out. Like if I go to system tools, there's one tab here for reboot, one for reset and firmware upgrade. I don't like it when, you know, even if it's on a simple switch where the reboot and reset are hidden under the firmware upgrade option. It's nice that it calls all of that out. I can hard code it at gig. Uh, that's the I think the best thing they did with gigabit Ethernet is get rid of the half duplex. Uh, one of the worst networking problems of my life was um, again the simplest, where one side was a hundred full duplex, the other side was a hundred half duplex. We're getting all kinds of speed issues, and we did different uh, patch cords, different switches, and and somebody had hard coded one of the sides uh, to have duplex and it would just cause us trouble for 
for hours. That was horrible. Uh, but we're able to do all that stuff. We can do port mirroring, has a nice little cable test. So if I say, if I want to go ahead and do a test on that, it'll give us a rough, you know, rough distance of how far it is. But if, if you're having cabling problems with that, you know, we're able to do, you know, basic spanning tree kind of stuff to make sure we don't have any looped uh, patch cords there. We, we, we looked at our VLANs a little bit. We can do port based VLANs. Um, what we didn't do on these other VLANs, like for, for VLAN, uh, if I go 101, again, I've got to put 101 in here. It's nice that it does pop up. So for ports 5 and 6, I can go ahead and set. Uh, so if I do PVID 101 for ports 5 and 6, let's go ahead and do that. Then you know I'm able to you know so that could be a printer or something you know that's not uh, able to uh, jump on that VLAN. I have some you know basic uh, QoS here. You know this is where you're gonna want to leave it on you know differentiated services. Have all that uh, bandwidth control if you want to if you want to cap a port on something you know you don't want it to be able to go. Then storm control in case one of your uh, NICs has an issue and starts spewing broadcast traffic or multicast traffic um, so again for a small business everything you could possibly want in there uh, probably the only two things to keep in mind is one there is no cloud programming so we're going to do that right here on the website or on the app and the app you know would be perfect if it would you know it would stretch out you know if you could use all 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 of that white space i much prefer the app over um the the, the browser here but i showed you in the browser just because it's easier to see as far as cost goes uh msrp is is uh, 90 bucks here um but again black friday deal um it's 60 dollars. but normal street price what, what you see it as about 70. the poe version of the exact same switch msrp $160 and uh, the um, price uh, Black Friday is about $127. So if you need a nice little uh, cost-effective POE switch or or non-POE switch, uh, this you know really hard to go wrong with this. Hope you enjoyed this quick run through of this TP-Link switch. On this channel, we talk a lot about network equipment, different kind of things that will make your life and your job a lot easier. So if you like that kind of content, please give us a like and subscribe. Aloha.